has something pretty fantastic. She owns a yoga studio here called The Space Between that has some like really loyal fans and it's pretty fantastic. It's also a yoga studio for working from at the Hoxton, which is how we met, uh, which is really cool. So I'm so glad to have met you. And she shared a really cool Spotify playlist too, which I've been listening to for two days. So you're welcome to use that whenever you like. We thought it'd be fun for her to tell us a little bit about how we should be moving while we're stuck in quarantine and a good way to start a kind of decadent exercise like virtual boozy brunch is. So Darren, I'll let you take it away and show us what to do. Awesome, thank you guys so much for having me. Again, I'm Darren Schwartz, the founder of The Space Between. This is John, he's my partner in all of this craziness in the business and we're really excited to be here with you. Um, we joined last week and got sufficiently wasted. Um, <laughs> so staying a little more sober, at least for the beginning part of this boozy brunch. Um, but I think, as we mentioned earlier, like it's all about balance. So we have been eating a lot, we've been drinking a lot, and we love those things. Um, but also important to take care of ourselves, to like come back home to ourselves, to step inward. Um, and especially during this time when, um, you know, stress and anxiety are probably a little bit higher than they typically are. A lot of us are out of work or short on work and worried about a lot of things. So some of the things that we're going to do today um, are going to help ease some of those anxieties, going to help bring us home to ourselves, reconnect with ourselves and with each other. So um, what I always recommend is start by creating an atmosphere for yourself that feels good. So I have a candle lit here. I'm going to light some Palo Santo because I just love that scent and it's supposed to have some nice clearing properties, um, promote good energy and all that woo-woo stuff. So, you know, if you have a candle, light it up. If not, just hang out. Um, if you do have on a big sombrero, you can try and keep it on, but it might be a little bit of a challenge as we get moving. We're not going to do anything too crazy because I know a lot of you have already started drinking, so we won't be doing anything too crazy in terms of movement, but we're going to start with some breath work. Pranayama, so prana means life force, like that vital life force that just flows through us day in and day out. And yama is the controlling of the breath. So pranayama is the practice of controlling your breath to help um, with your nervous system, to help with your um, physiological being, to help with your emotional state, your mental state. Um, and I find that when it comes to meditation or yoga, pranayama, breath work, the breath is the thing that gets me dropped into my practice the fastest, the deepest. And I also find when times, like when my heart starts racing a little bit, I get a little bit anxious. If I come back to my breath, if I make my breath intentional, it always calms me down. So we're going to start with a few different practices. Um, one is pretty simple. Just place your hands on your belly. You can do this seated or you can do this standing. Place your hands on your belly. Close down your eyes. And just take a cleansing breath in through your nose. Open your mouth. Let it go. One more time, just like that. Cleansing breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale to let it go. On your next inhale, imagine that there's a balloon in your belly and as you inhale, that balloon inflates and grows bigger and presses your belly into your hands, presses your hands outward. And then as you open your mouth and you exhale, you feel that balloon deflate, you feel your belly button come back towards your spine, you feel everything come back into the middle. So inhale big, feel your belly pressing into your hands, your hands press outward. Open your mouth, exhale, and feel everything come back to center. One more time, just like that. Inhale, inflate that balloon big. Open your mouth, exhale, and let it deflate. Now place your hands on the outsides of your ribs, so the widest point of your ribs. And as you inhale, feel your ribs expand side to side. Feel them pressing into your hands and then getting wider in your body. And then open your mouth, exhale, and feel them knit back together. Inhale to expand your ribs wide. Open your mouth, exhale, let it go, come back to center. One more time, just like that, the biggest one. Inhale, expand wide in those ribs. 
Open your mouth, feel those ribs come back together. Now place your hands over your heart. And as you inhale, imagine your heart pressing into your hands. So that breath growing big in your chest and your heart presses into your hands. And then open your mouth, exhale, and feel it fall back down. Inhale, heart presses outward, chest expands. Exhale, open your mouth and let it all go and let it all fall. One more time, just like that. Inhale, dig into the chest, into the heart. The heart goes into your hands. Open your mouth, exhale, and let it go. Now you can release your hands down by your legs. Inhale to inflate that balloon in your belly. Your ribs expand wide and your heart presses forward. Feel nice, big, and full. Hold at the top. Exhale, feel everything come back to center. Inhale to expand and inflate that balloon. Your ribs go wide. Your heart expands outward. Exhale, feel everything come back home. One more time, just like that. Inhale, inflate that balloon. Grow your ribs wide and press your heart out toward the world. Hold at the top. Feel full with all of that air. Take one more sip of air and grow just a little bit bigger within yourself. And then open your mouth, exhale to let it go. Now you can release your hands. You can just come back to your normal breathing. We're now gonna move on to something called Nadi Shodha, which is called single channel breathing. So place your forefinger and your middle finger to the space between your eyebrows. Place your thumb on the outside of your right nostril and your ring finger to the outside of your left nostril. I'm gonna let John demonstrate so I don't have my hand in front of my face while I'm talking to you. You can keep your eyes open, but if it is more comfortable or if it is comfortable for you, you can close them down, go inward just a little bit. Press your thumb into your right nostril. Inhale in through the left. Receive in through the left. Hold at the top. Press your ring finger into your left nostril. Release the thumb from the right and exhale out of the right. That requires a lot of coordination, Dane, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. It does, and it will, it'll get you dropped into this boozy brunch. Don't you worry. <laughs> Keep that ring finger pressed into the left. Inhale in through the right. Hold at the top. Press your thumb into your right. Release your left. Exhale. Hold at the bottom. Inhale in through the left. Hold at the top, press your ring finger into the left, release the right, and exhale. One more time, inhale in through the right, hold at the top, press your thumb into your right nostril, release the left, and exhale to let it go. You can release your hand down by your arm. One of my favorite teachers always says, inhale the good shit, exhale the bad shit. So as you're breathing in and out, even just your everyday life, imagine that you're inhaling everything that's good for you, everything that you need. And as you exhale, imagine that you're just like letting some shit go, that you're taking something off that is not yours, that is too heavy to carry. See if you can just get that out of you and let it all go. So now for just a little bit of light movement. Again, I think people have already been drinking, you're wearing big sombreros, so we're not gonna get too aggressive with it. We're gonna do some half sun salutations. So starting with your arms down by your sides, palm facing out, samastitihi, standing at attention, rooting down into all four corners of the feet, growing the crown just a little higher, the crown of the head just a little higher to the sky, creating some space in your body. Take an inhale here, open your mouth, exhale to let it go. Inhale, sweep your hands high, Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute, draw your palms together and pull them into your heart. Inhale in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale, to let it go. Inhale, send your hands high, and this time hinge at the hips. Press your heart forward as you fold your torso over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift, draw the palms of your hands to your shins. Exhale to fold down. Inhale, send your hands high all the way to the sky. Look up towards your fingertips. Root down into all four corners of your feet. This time, goal post your arms. Bend your elbows. Kiss your shoulder blades together at the back and press your heart forward. 
open up that heart just a little bit more. We spend so much time hunched over our phones, our computers, our bars, our kitchens, whatever it may be. So open up that heart, press it forward. Inhale, send your hands high, and then draw your palms together, pull them into your heart, and at the same time, dive forward. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine like you can put a tray of these awesome palomas on your back and not let it tip. Now exhale, hold over your lips. Inhale, send your hands high one more time. Draw your palms together, pull them into your heart. Pause here. Take one more inhale in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale to let it go. Now, I want you to step your right foot behind the left. Step it pretty wide out. So your right leg is going to be straight. Your left leg, there's going to be a slight bend into it. So just a slight bend, that right leg is straight. And now send your right arm overhead. Catch your right wrist with your left hand. Pull up and over. Press your right hip over to the right side of the room and feel the stretch all the way up the right side of your body. These side stretches and anything twisting is going to be really good for digestion. So after you eat and drink a lot, make sure you twist the knot out. Take an inhale to stretch a little bit deeper. Press that right hip over to the right and then come back to center. Step your left foot behind the right. Straight left leg, slight bend in the right knee. Send your left arm overhead. Catch your left wrist with your right hand. Pull it up and over like you're arcing up and over to the right. Bump your left hip over to the left. Erin, this is so amazing. So can people take like a breathing and stretching class at your studio? Well, all of our classes do include and involve stretching and breathing. We don't have any just stretching and breathing classes, but that's not a bad idea. We do have an awesome one. class called Undone which is a way to like move really slowly, kind of work the shit out of your body. And so that's probably like, I would say undead is closest to what we're doing now. So yeah. different, but it's a great offering. It's so amazing. I mean, I am a person that is like deathly afraid of yoga. I think I've gone maybe twice and each time it just scares me. So <laughs> I'm happy to see that there's a component of it that I can actually do. Yeah. And also can facilitate having a really great time. So we're so grateful to learn that with you today. Thank you. I hate to cut you off. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we're going to keep sharing Darren's Venmo info. So let's make sure to tip her and to support. And she's doing uh, virtual classes. So you can definitely yeah, write so check us out at the space between yoga.com. Um, we're doing live stream classes daily. So hope to see you guys soon and thanks for having us. Not we're so excited day. you're here. And you're not allowed to leave because now we're moving on to the decadent part. That was the good for us part. <laughs> I feel, Matt, you want to get us started? So relaxed. Make sure to follow along with your bingo card. If you get the squares right, Belinda will send you out the kit for next week. So you can have the booze ready, the food ready. So make sure to follow along with that. Um, I feel so zen and so good right now. Me too. I'm, it's awesome. I'm ready to drink some egg white palomas and some mint juleps. So let's get let's start it off. Uh, first guest is Roger Landez. First he, boozy guest. Next boozy guest. Yeah, I'm sorry. He is the new beverage director of Mito Gaia. Super excited to work with him, to learn from him. Um, and he's here to do a spicy egg white paloma. So Roger, why don't you walk us through um, the first steps of this and kind of what inspired this as well. Yeah, so uh, one of my favorite combinations uh, is working with chilies and cocktails. So uh, today we're using a fresh chili, which is jalapeno. Uh, jalapeno and grapefruit goes really well together. A little bit of bitter, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of tartness, with a little bit of like an earthy spice works uh, really well together. Uh, we wanted to fancy it up for you guys, so we just did an egg white for it. Kind of like a, a, a jalapeno paloma fizz, if you will. Uh, so first up, we're going to work on our egg white. Uh, so always start with the egg. Um, the reason we start with the egg is it's really easy to mess up. So if you accidentally get the yolk in there, just toss it, grab another egg, and then you can just start over again. But the idea is that you're just going to kind of pass it from one to the next. So crack your egg in half, open it up. Oh, I got two yolks. Funny. That's good luck. That is good luck. Let's see if I can pass it. That was amazing. And we're just going to let all that yolk, uh, excuse me, all that egg white roll off into the other tin below us. And that's that. Easy does it. Roger, Roger, sometimes bar use like 
they use the pasteurized egg whites and stuff like this, doing it fresh will give a much better product, right? You'll get a lot better foam, that's for sure. So it'll actually start to like kind of uh, bubble up a lot better, that's for sure. Uh, so now that we have our foam, we're gonna move on to our acid. I've got a little lime juice here. We're gonna do three quarter ounce acid. Uh, so uh, if you've got a jigger at home, that's great. If not, you can totally work on just a straight up shot glass. Just fill it about three quarters of the way up. Three quarters grapefruit juice. Three quarters simple syrup. So it's a really easy recipe that you can totally remember. You know, Roger, so part of why we're doing this too is because I'm obsessed with egg white cocktails. I think they're so fun. So if you're like, you know, totally world-class bartender like you and Michael, are they considered cool or not cool, annoying? Like what's, what's your egg white cocktail philosophy? <laughs> I had a regular that used to come into the Loyalist every uh, Friday at 1.15 in the morning and order a uh, Ramos Gin Fizz. And it got a little frustrating eventually, but it was still just like, you know, I kind of had to pay my penance for the end of the night. So, uh, no, I love making egg white drinks. And the froth that you get out of it and the kind of body um, is really interesting to me. I think a lot of cocktails that aren't really well made can be a little thin or a little thick or not have the texture that I think is really appetizing. I think this brings us to like a really cool spot. So it gives a little froth, gives an egg white. I wouldn't worry about any like uh, problems with like health sanitation or anything like that. Uh, the acid and the alcohol is going to cook that egg white really well. The alcohol will kill it. I totally <laughs> agree with that. It's cool to make a cup first, and then when it's like you got like seven on your on your ticket list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That gets a little <laughs> frustrating, but that's okay. Uh, then we're going to do two ounces of Escalon Blanco tequila. Uh, this is probably my favorite mixing tequila. Uh, it doesn't overpower anything that you're working with. Works really well with acid. Um, Got a little salinity to it too, which a little salinity in an agave spirit is really important. Uh, so, two ounces, Roger? Two ounces. Got it. So then we're gonna, uh, whatever you're using, just kind of close it up, no ice. Uh, so the whole idea is that we're gonna help emulsify the egg white with the rest of the product that we're using. Um, uh, my mother's a chemist, I think she's on here right now. She could probably explain a little bit more about what emulsion means. Uh, but essentially, you're just going to make everything mix together really easy. You should find your mom. She can give us some science. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm into it. So this give it a little shake. Just, uh, nothing fancy. You just got to get it back and forth. Uh, maybe 20 seconds. That's but probably doesn't good enough. explode? Frankie Marshall taught me how to shake, but um, she didn't tell me how to make it not explode. Yeah, you just got to kind of like uh, hold it like a football, uh, yeah. which I hate making sports analogies, but... Uh, you kind of hold it in between, so you got your pinky finger on the bottom and then the rest of it kind of on the top. Okay. Uh, and if you want to use two hands, that'll make sure that you're good. Uh, so then we're going to open it up, add about five ice cubes. So that's called a dry shake, right? That is called a dry shake or a mime shake. A mime shake? Mime? Like uh, uh, Robin Williams started off as a mime? <laughs> oh, cool. All right, and then we're going to give it our regular shake with five ice cubes. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a longer shake, so maybe 30 seconds. I don't know how to do this without looking dorky. <laughs> <laughs> so give it a little smack on the side. It should open up really nicely for you. And then we're going to take our Collins glass. Uh, or if you're using a cobbler shaker, you can just take the tight tin off the top and we're going to strain it into the Collins glass. Oh, it's and a little bit of grapefruit soda. Uh, so uh, if you've got squirt, that's kind of my preferred one. Uh, but if uh, Juaritos or Fresca or anything like that, um, I also talked to somebody this week that said they just like it with soda water. That also works. Wow, Rebecca, uh, Justin, you guys are 
Look wow. at these two. Nice job. No, I'm oh, really excited about this. We, we have Oklahoma's. So. Roger, how did they do? There's that looks great. Like yeah, I like it. I like the head you got on there. That's important. So I add a couple ice cubes to mine. You don't need to add ice. You can totally do it without, but I like a little cubes. Yeah. And then sometimes the uh, egg white can be a little uh, aromatic in an unpleasant way. So I do a little Angostura bitters that I just kind of dribble on top. And give it a little stir and you're good to go. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's so delicious. You guys, egg white drinks. I've never done this by myself before. They really all look so good. That's awesome, Roger. Hey, anyone that's done with their drinks, go ahead and show, show them to the camera. Like Belinda, yep. Nice job, everyone. Wow, there's some good looking, wait, okay. Oh, I like Kaha, that, the whole garnish. garnish. What's up? We all, Kaho, we always want to see yours, because look at this garnish. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. you have a little bow tie on it. <laughs> That's so good. Well, cheers, everyone. That's a delicious first drink, but. Cheers. All right, cheers, everybody. <laughs> that was well, delicious. So Matthew, when this is all over, we'll be able to see you and Roger behind the bar. At yeah, yeah. Can't wait for the so <laughs> You're You're and so many good hints. I love this all. So fantastic. Wow, I'm excited. But it's not over, folks. We have one cocktail now. And please, Venmo Roger, if you loved making that cocktail with him and or if you Delicious. just want to support him through this crazy time. That's what we're really here for in the end, is to take care of our friends. So thank you, Roger. Well done. Thanks, Roger. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. I'm counting down the days, bro. Yeah, we'll get there eventually, brother. <laughs> so we have a light-spirited cocktail today, and we also have a dark-spirited cocktail. And the reason why we're doing Cinco de Derby is because I love celebrating the Derby. I've never actually been, but I've been to some epic Kentucky Derby parties. Pat Kinsman in New York used to throw one every single year in Park Slope, and I loved going to that. And Frankie was so kind to introduce me to Michael, who is a legit world-class bartender from New York, who's worked at some amazing places, and is now the Woodford Reserve Ambassador. I'm sure you've all heard of this amazing spirit, and they're doing incredible things right now, especially to support our community. And I thought it'd be really great for him to do a mint julep kind of situation for us. So Michael, take it away. Hi everybody. Hi. What's up Mike? Thank you uh, first and foremost for having me. This is absolutely an amazing community of people and it's fantastic. So I'm really, really excited to be here. Um, as I'm sure most of you know, yesterday, uh, Woodford Reserve, NBC um, came together with the Kentucky Derby and did a virtual derby. Um, as well as the throwdown of all the Triple Crown winners. Um, so we had a fun little day to kind of unwind and disconnect, much like this platform gives us on Sunday afternoons. So um, we thought, well, let's dress up in our derby best and do a julep. Um, we are going to do a frozen julep today as well, uh, just to give us a fun little twist on that. So we're going to start with the prep on that, and we'll do that real quick, and then we'll make the, the, the classic julep. Um, and so what we're going to start with is I just did like a liquid measuring cup with just full of ice. So two cups of ice, essentially. I don't have a blender. I have like these little Vitamix, like protein shake things that I'm gonna use today. So I'm gonna crush this first because this isn't powerful enough to do it. And then I'm gonna put the crushed ice in here with the julep. So if you have a, a bag or a towel and a mallet um, and you wanna crush with me right now, please, this is the time. If not, we're gonna do it again in a minute anyway, so. We're gonna crush with you, Michael. I'm ready to crush. crush. Let's crush. So the nice part about the julep, well here, let me crush first and then we'll, then we'll talk about it. Cause you're not gonna be able to hear me. My neighbor thinks I'm crazy, by the way. My neighbor is always hearing all of your voices and fun and then now ice crushing too. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like uh, uh, we have this amazing neighbor next door, Miss Marsha, and I know that she has to hear that through the wall and has to be wondering what the hell is going on in her house. <laughs> uh, can we also talk about all the beautiful things you have in your setup? Like this is the kind of classic aesthetic, right? These sure. jewel pops and all that fun stuff. Yeah, so, so what you're yeah. there, uh, we're really unique. We're the only American whiskey distiller or, or producer that uses a triple copper pot distillation, uh, which is really, really common in, it, well, it's Irish whiskey and Scotch whiskey. That's the traditional method of distillation. 
Um, so, but we're the only American company that does it. So hence the, the copper, uh, uh, copper pot here. Um, all of our, uh, you know, tools and things, copper is kind of what we've embraced as part of the, the brand image. Um, so as the ambassador, I have a back room just full of this stuff. So anytime I can break it out and show it off, we're going to do it. So, I mean, it's so in, cause you're just like rose gold for life over yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, I feel great. My wife loves it. <laughs> You know, good for my skin tone. So it, everything works out really well with the copper. I'm really happy. Absolutely. Uh, okay. All right. So we've got our little blender cup full of the crushed ice, right? So really, really simple. A julep, while I love this drink, is you can control every aspect of it, right? So I like my juleps to be really minty. So you're going to see a lot of recipes. are going to call for eight to 10 pinched mint leaves. Really, I just grab a bunch. I don't really... I don't know if you can see it on Brooke's phone or not. I don't really care what it looks like. You know, I want as much as I can get in there. And I actually will throw some in with this just for the fun of it. Yes, I love it. I also made a mint simple syrup. And I believe this was included kind of in what went out before the show, but really, really simple. One cup of roughly chopped mint that's de-stemmed. You don't want the stems in there. So just the mint leaves chopped up. One cup of sugar, one cup of water, bring it to a boil and then reduce the heat and let it simmer for about 10 minutes and then strain the mint and you have a mint flavored sugar, which is also just gonna drive that, that flavor up and it's really, really easy. Michael, it's so crazy, like people buy simple syrup. I don't know, like, I mean, anybody can the make easiest this. easiest thing in the world to do. Yeah, look, I, I invited my family on here and I don't know if my brother Dominic is watching or not, but he still buys syrup and it drives me crazy. Dominic. Come on, Dominic. Come on, Dominic, make, make your own. Home, just make it at home. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get so much trouble. Okay, so um, <laughs> half an ounce is kind of like the industry standard as far as what most julep recipe is gonna call for half an ounce of syrup. Once again, if you like it a little sweet, you can always add. If you don't, you can just go a little less. I'm gonna go with half an ounce, especially in a frozen cocktail because you're gonna have so much more water. You wanna make sure you sub a little bit of that sweetening agent. So Michael, right now we're building all that in the glass that has the crushed ice in it, right? Yeah, yeah because we have the frozen cocktail, right? We're gonna blend it up here in just a second. Okay, okay. got it. And then top it with two ounces, two and a half ounces of bourbon. <laughs> two ounces is gonna be, you know, the, the standard, but we're, we are once again blending this with a little bit more water in it. So if you wanna up it a little bit, no one's gonna be mad at you for that. Hey Michael, what's your favorite type of sugar to use for simple syrup? Uh, Demerara, okay. sugar raw, turbido sugar. It's just a little richer. It's got a, a little bit more of a viscous mouthfeel to it. I mean, white sugar, regular simple syrup's great. Uh, but Dem for me just adds a whole other like level of like velvety texture to a cocktail that especially if it's a stirred drink is uh, awesome. Like truffle oil versus regular oil. Right. <laughs> nice. All right, so sealed up, ready to roll onto the blender. And here we go. I think it's also a really good practice to have a drink to sip on while you're making the blended drink. It's right. <laughs> I mean, the Flomas are a perfect segue into this. And then you get this nice, I mean, it's just perfect. Yum. And you get a little leftover for the next one. And then perfect. you still, still garnish this the same way, right? So you want to get a nice little bit of mint. And, uh, you know, for anybody out there that's asking about mint, right? Because you go to these bars and you see all these amazing herbs and, Everything's up on the bar top and you, it's just beautiful. Mint is one of the ones that I think that probably gives everybody a little bit of a headache. Really, really simple. And everybody else on here that works in a bar can probably tell you the same thing. What we do is we blanch the mint in ice water for 10 minutes and then take it out, essentially bat it all up to get the water off, cut it at an angle, and then put it into a, a, a cup or a julep cup that's got hot water in it. And that mint will stay bright and active throughout the entire shift. Like a hot salt. water. Wait, yeah, oh water. wow. You know what, I think I did it backwards. I blanched it in hot water and then put it in ice water and it just went blah. Yeah. <laughs> Cold and then hot. And then at the end of the shift, you know, you just put it in a damp paper towel, put it in the fridge. And then the next day you'd redo it again, blanch it, recut it and put it back in hot water and it'll keep staying awake and staying bright like that until you've used it all. I think Michael, you just changed a lot of people's lives. I see a lot of things in the chat where they're like, "What? Blanch and cold, and then put in hot." What? A lot of trial and error until we finally figure that out. So <laughs> nice. Uh, awesome. And then your frozen julep, the nice little bit of mint. Uh, 
we're gonna do oh there we go perfect look at this camera wow. work wowza on it. camera angle so now we're gonna do a traditional mint julep and Let's this one's it. really really simple same kind of same kind of steps right so you're gonna take that bunch of mint that you have into the julep cup half an ounce I'm gonna do a quarter ounce I like it a, I don't need as much sugar in this as I would in the blended so just a quarter ounce of syrup into the julep cup you're gonna take your muddler or a rolling pin or back of a spoon, whatever you have, and you're just gonna do a little bit of a press. And all you're doing is expressing the, the oil out of the mint. You don't wanna bruise it because it can get bitter. You're just really kind of waking it up and getting the oils into the cocktail. And then now we're gonna beat up some more ice. For time, I'm just gonna use my hands. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. All right. And now look. All your quarantine anger, all of your frustration, beat the shit out of the ice right now. And you'll feel so much better. Absolutely. Do it. <laughs> Carter. I love crushed ice and pebble ice. Those are my two favorites. I think they're so crushed great. Crushed ice <laughs> is insanely better than just regular ice. And we don't have Sonic here, so I don't know where you buy it here in Chicago, but I love it. Back in the day, I worked in a bar in Indianapolis called Libertine Liquor Bar, and we didn't have crushed ice machines, right? Like, like when I moved to New York, that was a whole other thing. So whenever we'd have julep season, it was always the best, because inevitably somebody would order a crushed ice <laughs> at three in the morning, and you could oh. take the frustration, like look at them in the eye while you just beat the shit out of the ice. <laughs> It's so relatable, Mike. Yeah. But seriously, dude. Now you want that? This is shot so, hour. <laughs> you're about halfway up in the in the julep cup with ice, and you're gonna add an ounce and a half of the bourbon. Or more. It smells Smells phenomenal. It smells yeah. so good. Oh my god. So good. And then take a bar spoon, and what you're you're gonna you're gonna turn. And you're obviously gonna stir it. But you also want to lift, right? Because you want to make sure that you're getting that mint off the bottom of the jewel cup. You're getting this nice kind of frosty outline on the outside of the glass. Making sure everything kind of gets to know each other in the cup. From here, I use the paper straw on the first one. I'm going to use the metal straw on this one. Oh, it smells so good. Straw. And now grab as much. I mean, look, I want your mint to be obnoxious. That's the whole point. So grab as much as you can get. And you're going to get a little smack on your hand. And all you're doing, same thing with the muddling, is the same idea. You're waking up, you're breaking the, the, the skin off and getting the oil, so it's super aromatic. But you don't want to beat it up too much. Just, you can actually spank it if you want. Not my thing, but you know, maybe you're. Um, and then just shove it down into the glass. Kind of hide the straw behind it. I love this. This is the sexiest drink ever. Yeah, no, wow. Think about like your hat. Your hat's awesome. big and fun. The, the drink should be that way. Your garnishes should be that way. That's the whole point of this. You want it to be seen. So pack it full of crushed ice. Don't be bashful. And you can actually round it up with the julep strainer to kind of give you that nice round top. And then I also have mint dark chocolate. So a little bit of mint dark chocolate grated on top is a nice fun way. And then before you put the powdered sugar on, if you feel like it, grab your bourbon and add half an ounce to float on top of the ice. You definitely feel like it, Mike. You want two ounces at least in a julep because it's crushed ice, but I found this great hack of doing an ounce and a half in the thing, and then if you pour half an ounce over the ice, you're gonna get this awesome bourbon aromatic with the mint. It's just a fun like play on one another, and then take your spoon, if you don't have a, a sugar shaker, a little bit of powdered sugar, give the spoon a little bit of a tap. You don't want powdered sugar, right? I don't want it. <laughs> and you get this awesome, like, chocolate and white sugar and mint and bourbon, and it has this nice frosty outline on the glass. If you have nutmeg, you could use nutmeg. That's another classic spice that could go on top. You have this amazing mint julep to enjoy. Oh my God, it's wow. so much fun. Wow, Michael. Oh, beautiful. It smells even so better. Much. You're very, very wow. Well. Between you and Roger, I think we all really up yes. the cocktail games. Yes, these are <laughs> awesome cocktails. Michael, you're a G, dude. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Man. Wonderful. Mm -hmm.
I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It warms my heart to see all these. Oh my god. Here's yeah. everyone. So freaking fun. Hello, everyone. Happy uh, Super of the Derby Day. Nice job. Wow. Wow. <laughs> look, look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. Interbasal. Super fun. Well done. Well, uh, now that we're of us. oh, look, nice. Hey, team queens. <laughs> Well done. I don't know about you, Matt. I'm two cocktails in. I should probably get something to eat now. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. You forgot to order like the appetizer platter. <laughs> yeah. We only do drinks and then uh, just entrees here. So. so to support this really cool cause that Woodford supports, it's called coregives.org. Michael, can you give us a one-liner on what that's about? Yeah, so it is, it's a not-for-profit in place to help children of hospitality restaurant employees that have been diagnosed with COVID. So, um, you know, obviously we want the people that have been diagnosed to be taken care of, but when there's children involved, it's even more important to, to help. Yeah. Children, so. yeah, important and really wonderful. And all these links will be shared again. They were shared in your pregame email and we'll send them all to you again after if you'd like to donate and support all of these incredible people and these incredible causes. Wow. Thank you so much, Michael. You're very welcome. Thank so you. fun. A great cause, a great drink, and a great guy. Make sure to follow along with your bingo slide if you're uh, still keeping up with that. Get all your stuff for next week and deliver it to you from Belinda herself. So thanks, Mike. Woohoo! All right. So like Belinda said, I mean, I've had two cocktails. I had like two beers before this, so <laughs> and I haven't eaten anything all day. So yeah. I need something to eat. So let's... Let's uh, introduce our first guest for food today. It's uh, one of my favorite people in the world, La Chef Machingona del Barrio, which means the most badass chef in the neighborhood. Woo! Here to show us some chilaquiles and salsa ranchera. It's Chef Ana from Mito Calle and Tojeria. Yeah! Hi, chef. chef, I think you're muted. Can we also talk about your headgear, hey, Tiana? You you you. Amazing. Look at that. Woo! Okay. Yeah, I can, you, you're good now. One more time. <laughs> you were good. I think you muted it again. Yeah. I think she muted herself. <laughs> Unmute. There oh, you go. Yay! How's it going? Woohoo! I'm so excited for this. We are doing uh, chilaquiles today. Chilaquiles, I feel like a lot of people, everybody's had, I think, chilaquiles before. And um, to me, I just really wanted to do chilaquiles of like what is like the traditional, the, the traditional way that you could find chilaquiles in Mexico. To me, anytime that I'm doing anything um, um, on the menu or just in general with Mexican cuisine, it, it always revolves around what is this, where does it come from, like why, how did this come into play, how old is it, and so chilaquiles, super beloved, and I wanted to do something that, uh, so chilaquiles means chile, chile peppers, chiles is actually to, uh, it, it's in a Nahuatl language, that means to be like uh, submerged in. Um, so submerged in Chile. Um, and tortillas is something that we've always had since the beginning of time. And here we have our dry tortillas. Now we're making a very, very classic salsa ranchera. Uh, I wanted to keep it super simple and just so we could, a lot of times people, you see, like already tortillas that are already like chips and fried, and then uh, they put eggs already in there, and they put a bunch of things. Uh, the simplest tortilla chilaquiles is always going to be uh, tortillas that you pan fry, and then you put in submerged them in chile, which is chilaquiles. Yeah. So that's where we're gonna start. So I just wanna go through the steps. I know everybody, for the most part, already started with their uh, salsa ranchera. I just wanted to let everybody know what it would look like. Tiana, it smells um, so good. It is super good. What, I always, one of the things that I uh, 
put into this recipe was actually adding some juiced carrots to it. I love juiced carrots. Salsa ranchera is a classic tomato salsa that uh, there's always tomatoes and it's tomatoes, chiles, onions, garlic, and chile. That's it. It's very, very simple. And so I know that we have put in, you can see here, so this is our, uh, Two weeks, you can do the phone. See, this is my, my husband's helping me. So this is our uh, onions, garlic, chile serrano, <laughs> salt, pepper, and uh, sunflower oil. So this is like what it should look like when you like sweat things. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So you see how like everything has just totally become translucent. We have beautiful onion, garlic, chile serrano. We got you. Here, I'm adding. Oh, yeah. So the volume has to be down on one of them. Yeah, there you go. So, Diana, I just wanted to ask you you mentioned this earlier, but you never take the seeds out of the chiles, right? So, someone was asking. No, I don't. Not with fresh chiles, no. Uh, I do with dry chiles. Gotcha. So, I just added right now the carrot juice, the fresh carrot juice. Not gonna lie, I bought mine this morning. <laughs> I was gonna juice some. I really was going to. So there might be lucky have, enough to have a market that's like right down the street for me where you could buy uh, fresh carrot juice. Oh, nice. Uh, that's awesome. This one, uh, I have a juicer at the restaurant, so I just got the juicer and I juiced for myself. And then the tomatoes, I put in that you would. You see this, so these are what stewed tomatoes. So the growing season in, in Chicago is very, very small, like tomato season. So like, so these are salted plum tomatoes that have been salted. Uh, I let them sit in salt for about an hour. And then after that, I uh, pureed half of them and uh, just reduced it now. Um, Again, I'm doing, I reduced them now because I just wanted to make sure that you guys can kind of see what everything should look like. Chef, we had a couple, chef, we had a couple questions about ingredients. Megan, what was your, your and Nina's question? Yeah, I was just wondering, I don't really use a lot of sunflower oil. Um, what are good alternate oils, like where oil directly on the uh, so grapeseed oil, I like using grapeseed oil a lot. Grapeseed oil is great, avocado oil. Um, and sunflower oil, I think, is just like one of my favorite oils just because I, I just really love the buttery sort of, I became obsessed with this uh, century oil that's here in, um, it's a local organic sunflower oil and I'm just like obsessed with it. Uh, I use it for frying like beans, I use it for frying salsas. Um, it's just really, really delicious and it gives you that sort of uh, local oil that will make you feel, you know, anytime that you have something from uh, La Tierra, from the earth, it's always going to be better. We also um, have a question oil about and avocado oil, also very good. Diana, we also have a question about like the how wet or dry the, the finished salsa yeah. should be, right? Cajo, what is your question? Because I, I made the salsa last night and it's, it's you know, it's a bit wet. And I was just wondering if that was expected as normal from all the stock. And Land, it shouldn't be. So when you when you uh, do your onions, garlic, chile serrano, uh, you should be salting. So you salt your onions, garlic. Um, Cooking is always about layers. You're always adding uh, a little bit of salt um, at every single um, every single level. So Jeff, the yes, onion, the garlic should. Salted and then the tomatoes, they should have been salted as well. So, and then you don't have to be adding so much. Like, so right now, I, this is no, I onions, garlic, chile serrano, tomatoes that I have like sort of salted. That was the base. No, I get any on my ankle. And then the uh, tomatoes that I had cut and let uh, sit and salt and puree some, that was already sort of almost perfectly seasoned because again you're like letting things reduce oh i think we're okay we both have pretty wet salsa rancheras so i think we're good and it, it's okay that so i'm doing this i reduced everything so here's my chicken stock that i made the chicken feet 
which makes me think about my uh, Tio Arturo, he would make chicken, chicken feet stock all the time for... Uh, Look at this camera work, this is awesome. <laughs> Way to go, Joe. This is okay, good. Yo, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing yo, it, Joe. <laughs> so, Cameraman, this segment is crushing all it. Of this, all of this has been like reduced now. I just wanted, normally this is like a one pot thing, but I just reduced everything just so you can kind of see every single sort of step of the way. This is what the end consistency should look like. And Mm, really good. And so this is going to be the salsa ranchera that you would see with huevo rancheros. Uh, I like making a huge, I'm a huge fan of tomatoes in general, but salsa like this you could put with fideos, you could put this with eggs, you could put this, uh, you could concentrate this and eat this with steak, like instead of a chimichurri. There's so many things that you could do with this. So this is our salsa ranchera. So now this is the, the money moment, right? The prime yes, money. so now we're going to make the chilaquiles. So chilaquiles always, I think people always uh, would do chips already. Part of the beautiful thing about chilaquiles is actually frying the chips yourself. Here I have, and it's really nice here in Chicago because we have molinos, mills, masa mills. Okay, um, masa mills where you could get fresh tortillas. Like this is a, a fresh tortilla that you uh, has no fillers, no um, gums or anything like that. Uh, I never even knew that people put things like that in tortillas until I moved away from Chicago for five years and realized that, you know, it's shelf stability. So uh, really nice to get fresh tortillas that you can get with no fillers whatsoever. This is all just lined corn. Uh, hey chef, what's your go-to tortilla in Chicago? Uh, my go-to has always been in Popo, Popo Catepec, uh, in, you know, in 18th Street. But 18th Street also has, um, they used to have in Rey, there's um, in Milagro, this is La Banderita. All of them have very, very good um, when you go there and buy them, or like close to Chicago, you'll see that they'll always have like fresh delivered tortillas. Um, in fact, you, you'll see them usually in packages like this, and you can feel that they're warm in the market as well. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. And they'll say, yeah, they'll say sin conservadores. So like if there's no uh, conservatives or anything. So it's really quite nice. But nice thing about making chilaquiles is that it's just like day old bread. Like this is like uh, after you had tortillas with your dinner, with your meal, um, and they dry up. What you make in the morning are chilaquiles. So what's, so what's the next step? Are we are we frying our tortillas now? Yes. So we're gonna fry our tortillas. What kind of oil do you use to do the frying of the tortillas? Diana? Grapeseed oil. I like using grapeseed oil. It's just better for you. That's the only kind of oil I have. It actually. also has a, a nice frying point as well. And we're heating this up before we put in the tortillas, or we just throw them in there? You can put them in there, because I mean, it's all going to get heated. And you do want the, uh, you, don't, you don't want to deep fry them. You just want to sort of mix them into the Got oil. It. This is where I meet, this is where I very much miss um, my kitchen at the restaurant, you know, like cooking at home with the burners that you have is totally different than like the commercial burners that you have at the restaurant. I'm like, why is this taking so long? <laughs> we all, I mean, I know that that's we what all you're doing. You gotta, so you want to move this around and sort of soak all the tortillas and saturate them in the oil so they can start uh, frying. Camera number two, you're doing a really excellent job and we also uh, really love your outfit. Joe is the man. 
Joe, 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 Joe. Yeah, Johnny's short on too, so. Oh, sorry. So how long does it take to do the tortilla frying step typically? So okay. I think that it, it always is kind of a matter of taste. If you like, there's, there's, I always like them a little, I like them crispy. Uh, so I like to really take them to like a crispy, crispy sort of, um, uh, it, and that would take, it could take eight minutes depending on your stove. Um, however, all you, it could also, there's a lot of times that you could just for three minutes lightly fry them and then add the, uh, the, the salsa and then you have like your chin so it, it, it depends on what texture you sort of want. I always like the, the crispy textures. Chef, are we cooking at a high heat? High, 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 yes. Right. You want to have high heat what? where you're going to definitely, and don't keep moving, but just kind of like let it crisp up a little bit. Like you have to be able to uh, feel like this works out good because you can walk away from it, tell your kids to stop playing around. You can walk away from it, tell your kids what they're doing wrong, what they should be doing. I'm also going to interview you come back to it. Just for a minute. So if you're going to cook the hot brown with Carrie after this, um, get your milk warm. Right, Carrie? Is there anything else people need to do to get ready for the next step? That's it, right? Warm milk. Okay. Uh, eggs. So a lot of times people think that chilaquiles always have eggs. They don't. So you have to ask for them. In Mexico, you expect to ask if you want eggs or not. So chilaquiles, you would just get tortillas that have been crisped up with sal salsa, submerged in chile. Uh, and then if you want eggs, you would ask like, oh, but I also have an egg, and you would choose how you would like it. So uh, during that time, while these are nicely getting crisp up, um, pretty much everybody in my household likes them sunny side up. But you can do whatever you want. And for the most part, you're always, um, let me get the shits. <laughs> you're not going to make it for one. You usually make it for uh, a couple of people. So you can use your pan. Slowly start cooking your eggs. Is that oil in your pan? Yes, a lot. Oh my gosh. Can I come over? That looks right. so good. <laughs> <laughs> we just have hers. <laughs> yes, I'm, like, I'm dying to have people over at my house. I just <laughs> came to the house. I like got like plants everywhere. Got like I chose like the most so crazy, ridiculous colors. I'm like, when can we invite people over? So you oh. see, like they're nice and patient. You see how they're nice and crispy now. See that? Yeah. Okay. Do we see it, Gabe? You and I are fighting for spotlight. <laughs> Sorry. Over <laughs> here. So as your eggs are working. Our tortillas are nice there. So we're going to add our salsa to our uh, tortillas here. Let's do about. Also, everyone, if you're doing hot brown, you can preheat your oven to as well. So I don't know what temperature. That's right. you're also what temperature. Your, uh, <laughs> because you're going to be simmering it with the tortilla. Save us some, Chef. <laughs> Roger, I'll take a cocktail kit for 10 more of these Tomi Palomas because I just finished two and it's they're really delicious. I feel like I want that'd be a good menu item, no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yum. So, so you see how that now you just have you, you have your crispy tortilla that you have 
kale tortillas that you can fry, um, and then simmer in a little bit of salsa. Nice job. Nice job, Dustin. That looks good. I'm seeing I'm lots of good looking chilaquiles out there. Yeah, your eggs working. And we're going to plate up. It's almost like you really need that crispiness, Diana, because if when once you put the sauce in, the tortillas just soak it all up. Yes. This but, is real deal. I love it. I've had so, the bad versions. I can't wait to have the good version. And well, you can serve a family like this. I want it. Yeah, she got it on. Hey, Libby, what's too hot? I mean, come on. Libby just said that her jalapeno was a little oversteeped. Yeah, no such know. thing. <laughs> so here's our chilaquiles. And then I always like sort of, again, traditional sort of varnishes that you'll have. Onions. Wow. Uh, yeah, we got it. Cotica cheese. Some uh, more sliced serranos. Bowser. Amazing. Like I mean, it's just um, a bit of avocado. Yeah, it's delicious. Eggs for the family. There we go. Wow. She always wants more salsa. Everybody Yay. wants more salsa. I want more salsa. Wow, look at that. Bird. Can't wait to build this. Incredible. This is pretty much chilaquiles for the family. <laughs> Or for just me. Wow, you guys. Let's see those dishes, guys. If you guys completed it, let's see. I them. see, I see Matthews. I see Mark. This is so Mark. many. Really oh, look at that. Whoa, oh, there's some great versions up there. I see Cajos. Cajos looks really great. Whoa. And we got salt bay moment. <laughs> Oh, and then you nice. always have extra salsa. Nice. So if you uh, want to soak up some more salsa, there you go. Salsa, ah. some limes. Wow. Wow, Chef. Where's Matt? Where's Matt at? Any questions? I'll show it again, Gabe. <laughs> okay. That looks it. incredible, Chef. Wow. Thank you so much. So I need <laughs> my cilantro and sour cream, but this is pretty much it. It's <laughs> not gang. I'm so I know. Joe's a sour cream person. That looks beautiful. Good job, Matthew. It's my first time making it. So if you'd like to support Mitokaya, this is a great way to do it. Well, cooking along with Diana, of course, and also there's their Venmo, and they also have a GoFundMe for their staff. And any day now, there's also going to be delivery. So we're so excited. Chef Diana and Joe, thank you so much for being with us. And if you made the chilaquiles, you just got another X on your bingo card. And... So since this is Cinco de Derby, we not only have a Cinco de Mayo dish, but we also have a Kentucky Derby inspired dish. And I asked my friend, Carrie Levins, um, to come on and do a sauce because we were talking a couple weeks ago at a post lunch chat that we all love 
kind of honing our cooking skills. And one of the big cooking skills besides poaching eggs and being able to make a crepe is also being able to make the master five sauces. So I thought this would be a fun way to learn how to make a Mornay because I've never made a Mornay before. And for those who don't know, like a really great mac and cheese apparently is maybe a Mornay sauce. And Carrie is not only an unbelievable sommelier, wine director, James Beard type person, and also Le Dom de Scopier. What are you, Carrie? Le Dom de Scopier what? Something. Uh, um, I, yeah. Oh, yeah, all of that. Yeah. And she also went to culinary school and is amazingly talented. And she lives with these two epic sommeliers from 11 Madison Park. Hi, Chris. Hi, Alex. So this is like an unbelievable epic your house. And I thought it'd be fun for us to make a hot brown together. So Carrie, I'll let you take it away. Yeah. All right. So um, first of all, I'm making the Paloma and the Chile Quines dish tomorrow. Okay. Yay, that's awesome. Oh, it looks so amazing. But since everyone's had a few cocktails, this was the perfect way to end because this is like the ultimate drunk food, a hot brown. Um, and yeah, it focuses on a classic sauce, so Mornay. So let's just make sure that we have all the mise en place. Um, I have, we, you can actually make your toast right now if you want. So I'm gonna just put my spoon in the toaster. Um, I've already uh, crisped up some bacon and uh, I seasoned some tomatoes. Oh, feedback. So this, yeah. the phone, you guys, it not only has to be muted, but the volume has to be all the way down. Yeah. You're on it, Belinda. Thanks, Gabe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number, this is number seven. <laughs> uh, and then oh, also, gross. since we finished this in the oven, um, I have the oven preheated to about 400. So we could actually do uh, a pick room in here. Because it's um, so to make a Mornay, basically what you want to do is melt about two tablespoons of butter. So it's going to be um, equal parts butter and flour. So it's going to melt a tablespoon of butter. And then your milk should be warm because if you add cold milk, it could You're like me. I had a hospital behind me. your sauce. I can't, I didn't even hear them. So we're just going to put the butter. And then with, to add to the two tablespoons of melted butter, you're going to have um, two tablespoons of flour. So we're basically making a roux, um, which is a, a thickening agent for a lot of different sauces. This is one of the mother sauces that we're starting with is a bechamel. And then once you add cheese to it, it becomes a mornay. Um, so we're going to start with the basics. So my butter is melted, and I'm just going to tap in uh, the flour, and I'm going to do this in small increments. Oops, I dumped it all in. Is that okay? <laughs> uh, well, so make sure that you're stirring it all in. Uh, if, if you dumped it all in, because you kind of want to just Put this in a little bit. And the other trick to making a classic it's sauce like this is to just watch your heat. Don't, um, you don't want any brown butter. You just kind of want to cook your flour. So I'm just tapping in the flour and whisking as I go. It's going to bubble up a little bit, but nothing's going to get brown. And you don't want it to be clumpy. Did you say it should be right now, Carrie? We're going to make like a little bit of a paste. Okay. And it doesn't have to be too hot. If you feel like it's getting a little too warm, you can just pick up the, the pot from the... And Carrie, you were saying this is the sauce that makes like the best macaroni and cheese too, right? Yes, and it, depending on how many sandwiches you make, you might have a little bit of extra sauce, so you can make some macaroni and cheese with it. Uh, yeah. For dinner tonight. So yeah, this is a, a recipe you need to know. So now you can kind of see that the flour is combined with the butter. And I'm just gonna cook it. It's just gonna bubble a little bit. And I'm gonna continually whisk, because I want it to be nice and smooth. 
I don't want anything to burn. I don't want it to be clumpy. What can happen sometimes in this stage is that if your ratios aren't exactly one to one, you can get a little bit of um, like separation of the butter. If that happens to you, just sprinkle in a little bit more flour to absorb the butter. Got it. So then you start to smell it. So this is a roux. Like if you were going to make a gumbo and you wanted it to be more toasty, you would put this to brown. But we don't. We don't need that. We just need this as a nice thickening agent for our sauce. And I'm pretty much good to go. How's everybody doing? We're ready to add things. Okay, so take your warm milk, about two cups, and again, you just want to slowly start to incorporate this and whisk, 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 whisk the whole time. It'll start to kind of come away from the sides. That's okay, just keep whisking. And just slowly incorporate the milk. Whisk, 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 whisk. Don't stop, don't stop. You're on a really low heat. And this roux will actually absorb all of the milk. So I have about two cups. If it's two and a quarter, that's fine too. That'll just determine the thickness of your sauce. And if you're using a pot like mine, make sure you um, are getting all the way into the corner so you're actually getting all of the flour into the mix as you're slowly pouring the milk and whisking and whisking and whisking. Does this have a number? If there's five classic sauces, which one's number one and which one is the Mornay? Well, bechamel is the classic sauce, and then Mornay is a derivative of the bechamel. And then I feel like there's a limitless amount of, of variations on the classic sauces. But I have a question from Rebecca. Spotlight her. We had Bob for a second. There she is. Rebecca, what's your question? Go ahead. Oh. Are we good? Yeah, you're really good. Go ahead. Oh, we just wanted to know why the milk needed to be warm. Like, why couldn't you just pull the milk right out of the refrigerator? That's a great question, Carrie. So some people say that you can do that, but it could actually, the, the drastic temperature difference between the warm roux that you just made and then the milk could cause the butter to separate from the flour and then become a little bit um, curdled. So you know how like you temper eggs sometimes into a recipe? Um, it's, it just causes a, it makes a smoother sauce when the temperature is max. So now at this point we're going to season everything. So we want to, um, like Chef Diane said, season all the layers. So I'm going to take a little All bit. the layers. All the layers. Just season every component as you go. So a little bit of um, salt, and then in French cooking, especially with um, any sauce with dairy, nutmeg is always like the secret ingredient. So I am going to, so this, the uh, temperature is still on low, so I'm gonna let the sauce thicken a little bit, and I'm gonna grate, oh, I just lost my cup. <laughs> I love that you said nutmeg because one time I bought all these things of nutmeg and I don't know what to do with them. So Oh yeah. Even well, the mint julep and your marinade sauce. Oh okay, nice. <laughs> so I already seasoned it with a little bit of salt. I am putting in some nutmeg here. Oh I dropped mine too. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be more flavorful. Okay. Well maybe fish it out, but all right, a little bit of nutmeg, and I'm going to put a little bit of pepper in here as well. So mine is starting to simmer. I should stop that. Yeah, you can actually remove it from the uh, from your flame. I'm going to mix everything together. Is it nice and thick, or is yeah. it a little bit viscous and thick? Yeah. Okay, good. The the thing with um, recipes with milk is that you want to really be careful about burning. So if yours is getting thick. Do we okay. dump in the cheese now, Carrie? Yes. Oh. So shut your heat off and go ahead. And again, this is going to be in just small increments. Um, try not to dump everything in at once, but do a handful of cheese and stir to kind of melt the cheese. And if you have cheddar braid, if you have Gruyere braid, you can just kind of use any, any melting cheese that is going to taste good. 
and then just keep stirring. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's gonna taste even better because it's gonna be so deliciously good. And I can really this done too. But if you want a really nice, smooth sauce, you just have to keep stirring, stirring, stirring. So it's totally um, melted and cheesy and velvety. I'm just gonna. Oh, um, I was gonna ask Darren while you're finishing the stirring, like that breathing counts as cardio, and then maybe the whisking Mornay also counts as cardio for today. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Awesome. I'm dumping in all the cheese. I can't take it. Okay. Go for it. That's a Mornay, huh? Nice. Mornay. If you have a nice, smooth, cheesy, delicious sauce, you've got a Mornay. And then can this hold for a little bit? Like, can you, do you have to use it right away or can you use it again later? No, you can use it again later. If it, if it um, thickens up, you can uh, reinvigorate it with some milk. So my toast is ready. I chose this toast because it was really nice and thick. And I'm actually going to butter both sides. Um, a note on the bread for a classic um, hot brown. Most recipes, a traditional recipe calls for the, calls for the crust being cut off. Um, and then also calls for uh, one of the pieces of bread being cut into triangles. I love the crust, so I'm going to keep it on, but if you want to be a real traditionalist, um, you can cut off your crust and keep it classic. So I'm just going to butter this because, you know, this is kind of like seasoning as well. You guys have like a bird outside your window. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I don't believe I live in New York City because I hear church bells and birds most of the day <laughs> rather than traffic. That's um, pretty awesome. It is a nice bag. I went ahead and I heated up um, some turkey just to kind of have every layer be really nice and warm before I put it in the oven. But now that our Mornay is done, we just have to assemble a really delicious cheesy sandwich. So if you can put your toast in like an oven safe uh, pan, we're just going to start to layer on the turkey on each one. And just like we did our mint and the julep, I want to put an obnoxious amount of turkey on the sandwiches. I'm just eating the Mornay. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and now we can just put on the tomato on each one. That bird is insane. <laughs> it's beautiful. It adds to the, uh, the, uh, the, the scene. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I love it. It is very idyllic. Most people don't know that, but it's like a nature preserve. <laughs> Michael, have you had a hot brown before? <laughs> mm. Yes, absolutely. Oh, am I muted? No, I got you. No, I unmuted you. Okay, I right. Yes, I have had quite a few in my day, and they are fire. Oh my God, I'm so, so excited. Oh, so I mean, the sauce alone, I feel like you could put that, I'm gonna put the sauce onto my chilaquiles. Mary, <laughs> is a hot Sorry, always with turkey? Yes. There you go, Mark. Right on. I mean, I, I love when people come up with their own riffs on things. Okay, so we have our toast, turkey, Seasoned tomatoes, the Mornay is on top of that. And I'm going to add a little bit of extra cheese because nice. why not? <laughs> nice. And Look at that. And uh, if you have the Parmesan or if you have another uh, cheese that you like, I have a little pecorino. I'm adding that too. And then this goes in the oven to uh, get nice and bubbly and melty. When it comes out, we're going to take uh, the bacon and frost it on the top <gasps> and finish it with a little bit of uh, chives or parsley. I love I'm it. We'll pop this in the oven for a few minutes. And if you can put it on broil if you want it to go a little faster. 
That looks like brunch to me. I'm so excited. You know what? As those kind of broil for a couple minutes, yeah. for seconds, I wanted to also let everybody know who's going to be joining us next week because all of our guests for Mother's Day are also here with us. I think they're still here with us. Steve Mathiason, are you still with us here? Because I'd love to have you say hi to everyone and kind of tell us what we're going to be doing with you tomorrow. He's here. He's not on video. I hear him on mic, though. Steve? <laughs> oh, Steve, Steve, she's calling him. <laughs> are you trying to get Steve? Well, Jill, you can tell us what we're going to do to next okay, week. She's coming on. Here comes Steve. If I can figure out how to get, how do I get the, um... There he is. <laughs> we see you. There we go. Here we go. Hey. How's everyone doing? We're so happy. We've had bourbon we're, we're, and We're tequila. cooking away here, actually. I'm going to move the, I'm going to flip the camera. And, oh, know, my we're, gosh. We're, we're kind of somewhat in the chili quile steam. It, so this is corn we grew in the garden that we're um, <gasps> nixtamalizing, and we're going to make masa tonight for dinner. So it's, re it's really fun. It was a fun like, doing it with our son Kai. Here's the um, his core. This is, this is Whoa! Last year. Wow, that's so beautiful. Kind of pluck the kernels off of it and um, and make polenta or you, you name what, you name it. Incredible! Wow. Beans soaked in Rancho Gordo beans. We usually we grow our beans, but these these big fat ones are really getting these big fat ones. We need to plant some of those this year. A little bit of squash. Jason Cho visited us last year from um, Blue Hill and brought us a little bag of um, these wonderful little butternut squashes. And so we saved the seeds and planted them. And um, they, they, they all came out different. This is totally different than those little cute little ones. So the genetics on it definitely weren't stable yet. But the, um, so we got all these different sizes and shapes of butternuts and they're really fun to, um, oh to roast up. The texture is different on all of them. This one's a little stringy, which is fine. We're going to puree this and make a pie out of it. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. So and these are some almonds that we're fermenting from our friends at um, Full Belly Farm. Two of these almonds, they're dry farmed almonds. And so we, so we, we, we sprout them up here for like four or five days and then dry them back down. And um, they, they're this, it really brings out the sweetness. Oh, it, it's super easy. Just take raw almonds, put them um, in, in water, put a teaspoon of salt in there and just let them sit there for like four or five days drain them down and then and then so we set the oven at 140 and um and for about 24 hours and then they get really crispy and delicious wow so steve we're gonna have you and jill and all this gorgeousness with us for mother's day virtual brunch next week so we're so excited thank you for joining us today and also for that and we're gonna learn so much from you and then you're also gonna let us know how we can buy the wine so we can drink along and um, make a cool cocktail along with you too next week. Yes. Woohoo! Yeah, maybe we'll make a few cocktails. I can't wait. And then we also have, since it's Mother's Day next week, Yvonne has been hanging out with us today and she's joined us before for some virtual fun. So, Yvonne Cadiz, we would love to hear a little bit and like a little preview. All right. Week. Hi. Yes. Hi. This was so great. Um, I'm still learning a little bit about Zoom, but it's been a great uh, video to watch to kind of prepare me for next week. So yes, as Belinda mentioned, we're going to be doing a floral arrangement. And you'll be able to follow along with me. I recently went uh, and to the uh, Flower School in New York, and I attended their floral design program. So I'm officially a florist. I spent right. six weeks with um, all the folks there and learned a lot. So I'll be sharing some of the tips along with you and really just show you how to make your own arrangement. You'll be able to follow along with me. We'll kind of, um, I've already gave Belinda the, uh, the recipe for next week. So you'll be able to get a lot of these um, floral stems because they are in season. So hopefully if you have either a local florist, um, someone that you can support or a floral farm in your area, uh, feel free to reach out to them to see if they have some of the stuff that we're gonna use in the recipe next week. And also you'll just need some simple tools. I'm uh, suggesting the three inch by six inch vase because it's gonna be a petite classic bouquet. And um, also if you have floral shears, they're helpful or a simple floral knife. That would be a good way for you to kind of um, 
I'll show you how to uh, condition and cut the stems properly so that it looks good when you actually place it in the clear vase because it's part of the beauty is also how you place the stems in the vase. So that's what we'll be working on next week. I can't wait, Yvonne. I'm so excited because uh, thank you. Me too. I don't know. I text her all the time. I'm like, oh, I have to do this thing with this flower. What should I do? And she always knows the answer. So Yvonne is someone you want to be friends with. And also because her husband is Bill Kim, a great chef, but she, I know, is also the woman behind the scenes for a lot of what they do together from Urban Belly, and they do all this really neat stuff. So our third guest for next week is also here, and he is a virtual boozy brunch regular. Hi, Ed. Bro, doing? Ed, Ed is baritone and a great home oh, cook. So tell us I'm what you're going to share with us next week. Yeah, I'm a um, so I'm a public school teacher by day, um, but I am a very avid home cook, and um, especially uh, since quarantine started, I have been cooking up a storm, um, just mainly to keep my sanity, um, but also because I love eating. Um, next week, we are going to be making a uh, croque madame with a uh, quick and easy Bernays sauce. Another um, mother sauce, yes. Right, right. And I actually I did a little bit of research. I guess the hollandaise is the mother sauce, and then the, the Bernays is like the, the derivative sauce. So. Baby sauce. Yeah, I'm really excited for that next week. It'll be really fun. We're excited to have you, like, in the spotlight with us the entire time next week. So, Carrie, are we, do we have some um, finished product to look at here? Yeah. We have awesome. Wow. wow. That's, top it off with your crispy bacon and a little bit of parsley or chives or whatever herbs you like to finish a dish. And that's it. Wow. wow. That looks amazing. That's look good. I'm so excited that I get to check off one of the five sauces off of my list. And next week, I'll check another one. <laughs> well done. How did everybody's sauce come out? Good. Mine's yeah. cute. I see a bunch of them out and about there, mostly with people with derby hats. <laughs> so Carrie is taking care of and feeding a household of three wine people, sommeliers from 11 Madison Park, and if you want to support them and help them out, there's Carrie's Venmo, and that goes towards the house grocery fund, as we yep. all kind of fight to survive through this moment. Yep. But Matt, <laughs> all live until restaurants open. Done. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, you can do the cooking. Um, with the bingo slide, if you've been you on the now, right you right. should have almost everything checked off. Be in the freezer? Screenshot it, and... Oops. Go ahead, B. You're good. You're good. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, also, Belinda and I were thinking about maybe starting this a little bit earlier as the weather gets nicer out. Um, so we wanted to ask everyone what they thought about maybe starting at noon instead of 2 p.m. So that would be 10 a.m. Um, Pacific time. And is it 1 or 2 p.m. New York time? Yeah. So, yeah. Matt, we were, yeah, just to elaborate on that, you know, it's been really fun to be with all of you during this time zone, but we know it's getting nicer and nicer outside and you want to spend your Sunday outside. So maybe we start a little earlier so you can have a cocktail, make a little something for a picnic basket, and then go outside and enjoy the day. So we'd love to hear your thoughts on if we move. Yeah, comment in the chat. Let us know if you, if you think uh, starting a little bit earlier would be better. It looks like everyone is pretty. Oh, well, support. Yvonne said it's better. Kristen said it's better. Rebecca Pam said, said it's earlier, better. please. Monica <laughs> said it's better. So I need to be, do we start like two hours before? We're starting, we're thinking of starting at noon central time and then 10 west coast time. And then what is that? 1 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think everyone seems on board. It looks like the comments are blowing up saying that earlier would be better. Cool. All right, so next week we'll see you two hours earlier, and then next you get week. to make a little picnic basket and head outside. Mm -hmm. Next week, Mother's Day, noon central time, our amazing guest Yvonne will be here to teach us how to cut some flowers. Steve and Jill will be here to walk us through their winery and show us some cocktails. And Ed is gonna show us one of the other uh, mother sauces, which is gonna be fantastic. So noon central time, 10 a.m. California, West Coast time, and 1 p.m. East Coast time.
And don't forget, these are all the great people that shared what they do best with us today, and we miss them in their proper spaces, but we can definitely support them today and help them to be able to open their proper spaces at the other end of this pandemic. So here is all of their Venmo and support information, and we'll also send that to you as an email after this is all said and done. Matt, I mean... I feel like it was a fun Sunday. My mint yeah. doesn't look cute anymore, but. <laughs> mine, mine is still hanging in there a little bit. The drink still tastes delicious. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you to all of our guests for today. And thank you to all of you for hanging out with us and making this Sunday a little brighter. It's just fun as always. And thank you to everyone. Like we said, uh, this gives me some structure in my life because other than that, I forget what day it is until there's boozy brunch on Sundays. Mm -hmm. We love you all. And we're hanging out for a little post show as we always do. But if you need to leave us, go do your thing. <laughs> we're here for you. Cheers. Right, cheers. Love everyone. See us next week. <laughs>